Verbitskaya, and she's going to talk about uh, parser combinators for context-free path querying. So 
this is why uh, we don't really want our uh, query designers to uh, think about not making our their query not left recursive or uh, not uh, or not ambiguous. Um, so this is why we choose to uh, make sure that we can work with any context constraint and also we want to work with any integral. Uh, the other thing we are uh, concerned about is uh, making sure that uh, the integration of the query language is transparent and what I, means, what I mean by that is that we don't want to introduce uh, a special DSL for that, especially not string based one. Uh, so we choose uh, to um, base ourselves, our solution on parser combinators based on that. Because parser combinators is a thing which allows us to uh, encode the query in the program itself and uh, we also get some benefits from using the host language, which um, uh, some guarantees uh, which our host language gives us. For example, we cannot just write a completely nonsensical grammar uh, and uh, we also get um, like composability features, uh, meaning that we can write some higher order queries and then specify them for the particular applications. And uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, the result we get is um, is natural in our host language and we just uh, come and try to um, do some post-processing for uh, the parts. Um, we chose to use uh, a library Meerkat. Meerkat is a parser combinator library in Scala. Uh, it, it implements CPS parser with normalization. Its strength in, is, in, is in that, that it works on any context grammar, even though even if it's left recursive or ambiguous. It allows just to write uh, this kind of query for the arithmetic uh, language, and, uh, um, and it will construct uh, I step for, for any string um, for this language. And it implements uh, several use features such as the macro scene, which uh, makes um, this specification into a uh, parser combinator use which uses only the basic ones. And also it implicitly converts strings and regular expressions into um, parser combinators. Um, so yeah, uh, our goal is basically making sure that we can run a typical Meerkat uh, specification against the graph and uh, get uh, the set of paths uh, we want to um, uh, Among the combinators the library supports, there are of course the basic one which is sequential uh, parsing and choice. And there is also um, optional parsing and repetition uh, which we are all familiar with uh, from uh, regular languages. And uh, there may be some kind of maps where we apply functions to uh, parsing results. Um, so now I think it's time to uh, say what, how we achieve um, our what is your query environments of parser combinators. Um, but first, we need to understand how graph is different from strings. We all know the string is just a linear graph. Uh, vertex. Uh, in this linear input graph is a position in the input and uh, the weights are symbols of, the, of, of our algorithm, uh, alphabet and uh, um, the portion in this uh, linear input graph is just the same as the uh, portion in the string. We <coughs> compute some intermediate portion result for every input string until we get to the end and there's our result. Uh, but what makes uh, a graph not a string? Um, there are two things which makes a graph not a string. First, uh, it's branches, and branches can be outgoing and incoming. Outgoing uh, means basically that for some input position we have more than one next input position, as compared to the string where we have only one at each input position. And incoming means that for uh, several uh, input positions we have one uh, equal <coughs> input position uh, as the next one. Uh, the other thing is just is, is that we can uh, have uh, cycles in the input graph, but they don't really differ from the um, from the incoming edges in terms of how we run parsers, uh, parsing all them. So um, now we can probably un uh, understand uh, the general idea of our um, parser computers for graphs. Um, 
whenever we have some linear input sub, uh, linear subgraph in our input graph, we can just um, parse along them as we would uh, parse strings. And whenever we have an outgoing edges from some vertices, we just uh, we just um, continue parsing along each of these edges um, independently. And uh, if we have some incoming edges, we just uh, merge, in some sense, uh, the intermediate parser results which we get. And we, make, we need to make sure that we don't uh, re-parse stuff that we've already parsed, uh, which can happen if we go around the circle, around the cycle. Um, and uh, uh, to make sure that we get uh, the results uh, when we are needed, we need to minimize it, this, uh, them. And uh, hope, uh, fortunately enough, Mercat does all of this. It, uh, that suits uh, our purposes just, just great. Um, I lied to you a little bit before when I said that uh, to find paths from here to there, we just need to run this query against the graph. We need to peek inside the vertices and to check what vertices uh, the path starts from. So this is the, the place where we decided that we don't need, we don't need to limit ourselves with uh, parsing just edges, we can also consider vertices uh, when we write down queries. Uh, so uh, this particular combination for the string uh, checks that this um, vertex contains the here in the, in, the, in, in it. Um, and basically, uh, there is no reason to limit ourselves with much of strings in edges and vertices. We can run arbitrary predicate uh, for the vertex, uh, and this is how we get uh, to the abstraction of the input, which, we, which we've done to make sure that we can parse for strings, graphs, databases, and stuff like that. Um, input abstraction is, uh, is uh, quite minimal. We need, it, need only to provide a function to check the node and uh, to uh, parse along the edges which we can. So if we have several outgoing edges, we need to check which one of them match uh, the uh, parser which we are trying to uh, parse currently, and then uh, use it in a, uh, in a successful parser. parser. Uh, we provide the integration for the scalar graph and for Neo4j and of course for linear input graph. Uh, so um, and also uh, it all. Um, over this input graph and parser combinators don't, don't really know anything about the particular implementation of your favorite graphic uh, graph structure data. Um, here's a example. Uh, this example uh, is um, it finds the actors which act in some movies and then uh, it after it ran the query it gets uh, the set of paths uh, by means of executing query, which this function actually it gets uh, a lazy, um, a lazy uh, list of uh, all the paths which we have, and uh, you can uh, get uh, as many paths as you are interested in. In this particular example, the result is almost finite, but it's of course not uh, in general case. And after we uh, run the query, we can. Uh, somehow post-process uh, the results. Uh, in this particular case, we filter the actors by uh, the number of movies they start in and uh, take the 10 top most. Um, yeah, um, we actually try to use our library on the different, in different contexts. Uh, first, uh, one of which is we tried to query ontologies. Uh, for uh, some hierarchy uh, information, um, we came up uh, about three times faster than our um, top speed solution, which we had before, which was faster than uh, the competitors at the time. Um, we also tried to implement some static, static code analysis. It's, uh, in this particular case, it was Maya RSL relations. Uh, uh, this one uh, runs up to five times faster than. Um, the trails library, it's just a graph combinators, uh, graph traversal, traversal combinators library. Um, and uh, uh, we also implemented these two, these two were actually context-free path queries, and we also run um, 
some sample of uh, movies database uh, queries to the movies database, um, which we uh, grabbed from uh, the Neo4j tutorials. And uh, at this uh, particular example, we run uh, about 10 times slower. And this is because like our solution solves a more general problem, and of course it comes with overhead because these uh, database queries are all regular, and we we uh, solve the contest report query problem. So this is one of our limitations uh, that we have overhead overhead for the regular constraints. And the other thing is just uh, I've told you that we can uh, lazily um, lazily extract all the paths, but if we have an infinite number of paths, which order which we should choose? It's not particularly clear at this point. And of course, uh, after we, we got the paths, we can compute some uh, semantics or just run some post-processing uh, on them. And some post-processing don't really need to explore every path, for example, the existence of paths. And some, for example, like uh, the number of paths semantic, it really needs to explore everything. So this is not really particularly clear at this point uh, um, in which limitation we can uh, compute semantics without uh, like losing anything. Um, so um, among the future works direction, we need to reduce overhead for regular queries. Uh, we are currently trying to apply the library for static code analysis in some of the IDEs agent brains, and we also. Explore, want to explore um, the possibility of moving towards more expressive grammars, for example, conjunctive grammar, which is uh, strictly more expressive uh, than context free, um, which can be used in bioinformatics squares uh, as compared to context free, which uh, is really not that um, precise of the result. Um, so, yeah, to summarize, I I told you how to uh, how to make your parser work for object path query, and uh, our implementation uh, works for any graph, any graph, any object constraint, uh, and also it uh, allows for the transparent integration of the query language. Everything is implemented as a fork to the original Mirkat um, library, uh, which you can find on GitHub. And uh, thank you for your attention. Maybe I just missed it. Like, can you tell, tell us a little bit about uh, where you plan to use this library? Uh, currently, we are trying to use it for interprocedural uh, analysis in IDE, uh, particularly for exception flow and for um, what was that? Um, sorry, uh, logs, uh, the detection of logs. The logs are in, in where where they're supposed to be. So you, you would construct a control program and then. Yeah, some kind of. It's it's a graph which, uh, it's it's basically um, it's a program expression graph, uh, to be precise. But it's it's it's, it's kind of. Depends on the program. It really depends yeah, on the program which you're trying to solve. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why Mirkat? Uh, have you compared to other? Um, we decided to use Mirkat because it was uh, the only one which supported uh, the uh, every every context free path, uh, every context free grammar. Yeah. Um, yeah, with memorization because you can really do it without memorization uh, efficiently. Um, there isn't any other library which is parser combinators and works for context free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We do something similar, but using logic programming instead of Python. Oh, should talk. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, so I was wondering, like, could you perhaps sort of, uh, like, if you're, like, if you don't have general context-free, a uh, general context-free language, like, if it's more specialized, like, could, could you, like, could you specialize it in somehow? What do you mean by? Well, let's say my, let's say I actually really have only a regular expression, yeah. like. Could I maybe use the same the same syntax to write it down, but then the framework could somehow figure out, oh, okay, this is a simple case, so. Well, yes, this one is regular, for example. Okay. 
and uh, our framework doesn't really uh, make any distinction between Raven and Raven T3 currently, but there is a RI generator, I think, algorithm which uh, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, there is an algorithm which uh, is similar to the thing which is under the hood of this one, uh, which really uh, works better for regular ex expressions and uh, it uh, like is flat, is uh, using full forms of And this one is which is Let's uh, thank the speaker again.